thank you for coming. Um, as he said, this is for about porting VCDL to Asterisk 13 and uh, random pop-ups, <laughs> uh, porting to Astros 13 and AMI version 2 plus. Um, there were a number of challenges that we ran into and this is basically going over them as well as uh, a brief history of what Vici Dial, uh, where it came from and how it was developed and uh, some of the technical aspects of it. Uh, quick brief history of VeachDial. VeachDial is part of the AST GUI client project, and ha but it has basically eclipsed it. If you still want to try and download the source code for it, you have to go to astguiclient.sourceforge.net. So, um, AST GUI client was started in 2003 by Matt Florell. Uh, originally, AST GUI client was a Perl only application. Uh, Vici Dial was a click to dial add on for that application. In 2004, Vici Dial became the main focus of the AST GUI client project and auto dialing was added. By 2005, Vici Dial and AST GUI client had moved to a full web based interface, uh, no longer using Perl TK, which you had to install on individual workstations, and it was a nightmare. Um, let's see, and everything else since then has been based on the exact same core as it was in 2005 with just very mi minor changes to things. Um, this is a quick anatomy of the VeachDial core. There's uh, basically four different uh, sections of it. One is a uh, script with a subscript. The AST update script keeps a list of active channels in the database up to date. Uh, the Ask Manager Listen script listens for key AMI events and updates various database tables with the data that I mean, from those events. Ask Manager Send is a script that is constantly looking at a specific table in the database called VeachDial Manager for new AMI events that need to be triggered. And it then turns around and uh, launches the Send script to actually I mean, uh, send those out. AST send action child connects into the AMI and issues a single AMI command and then disconnects. And finally, the fast AGI log logs all the calls that or logs the calls as they pass through the various parts of the dial plan. Um, much of the core of Vici Dial was designed around some of the odd quirks that. Uh, Asterisk, or in early versions of Asterisk has, and please forgive me, my, I, I wrote my presentation in LibreOffice, and this is PowerPoint, so. Um, show channels concise on high load systems would uh, generate inconsistent results. Uh, sometimes channels would just disappear and then come back from one run to the next. You issue it one time, there would be a channel. You issue it the next time, it wouldn't be there. You issue it a third time, it would be, I mean, it would be back. Uh, as such, we had to implement what was called bad grab code, which uh, would look at, the, I mean, look at the totals of the various channel types, and if they changed too drastically for the period of time, it would immediately uh, discard those results and run it again. Uh, other quirks were extra channel redirects, uh, which you'd use in the event of doing a three-way call. You have uh, to or the agent, the customer, and the third party. You want to move the third party and the customer off and keep the agent in place. Well, it actually ended up being easier to move the agent because these third, I mean, extra channel redirects would fail 20% of the time. Uh, AMI events at times were missing data or cut off. A uh, single AMI connection can take, I mean, could take seconds to respond after issuing an action before you could actually issue another one. This is why VeachDial actually connects and then issues one command, disconnects, and it just keeps doing that with new connections. Uh, so yeah. uh, AMI, or AMI at times will fail to log out. You issue a log out command and wait 15 seconds and then exit your script and it would throw a broken pipe warning in the CLI. Uh, let's see what other fun ones were there. Remote, I mean, remotely issued reloads had a habit of crashing asterisk under load, uh, meaning if you typed asterisk dash R reload uh, chan sip, it would crash asterisk. However, if you connected to the original asterisk process, 
you could issue that all day long and not have any problems. Um, so that's why if you actually run VCDial, you'll see that all, I mean, asterisk is run in, in a screen session so you can connect to the original asterisk process. There were many more uh, asterisk quirks, but those were some of the main ones. Um, the individual, I mean, now to go over the individual scripts, Asked update, it would open an AMI connection and issue show channels concise every 0.4 seconds. That way it would issue that at least once, or at least twice a second, it would get an update. Um, if channels changed drastically, it was considered a bad grab and thrown away. Good grabs were broken down into their individual channel types. Agent channels are logged into the live underscore SIP underscore channels table. This is because in the original way Matt designed VG dial, at, uh, it had T1s for outbound dialing and SIP channels for the individual agent phones. So that's why the anything agent related goes into the SIP channel uh, table. Trunks would uh, be logged into the live channels table. Channels that are no longer there are removed from those two channels. Asked update also performs st I mean, gathers st performance statistics and uh, validates parked calls. Asked manager listen. Uh, it connected to the AMI and would listen to, for various uh, AMI events. It also uh, listened for custom AMI, excuse me, custom AMI events that we added for both CPD and SIP hangup events. Uh, hangup, new state, new caller ID events triggered updates to the VCDial manager table based off of the uh, manager events that were run. DTMF events were logged to the VCDial DTMF log. Shutdown events were just logged as a general, hey, the system's shutting down. Uh, the CPD events are, I mean, were part of the now end of life Sangoma CPD, CPA, Parazip, Lira integration, all of those names are the same product. Sangoma had that, at, I mean, that was named that at one time or another. Uh, the SIP hangup events were used to gather data about hangups on SIP channels, basically the, uh, whether you got a 200 okay, 503, whatever. Both the CPD and SIP hangup events required patches to the asterisk code. That's why a lot of the time, you, if you run VCDial using one of our install disks, it's v asterisk version number dash uh, There were various patches, and those were two of the main ones. Um, ask manager send and ask send action child. The ask manager send script checks for new and queued events in the VCDial managers table. When one is found, various options for that event are parsed and a uh, manager action is built. The manager send script uh, forks off a child process and executes the asked send action child script. Asked send action child would then connect the AMI event and issue the action. After the action was issued, it would disconnect from the AMI and then close its connection. Meanwhile, the AST manager send script would sleep for a hundredth of a second and start all over. So every hundredth of a second, it was uh, issuing AMI events if there were uh, ones available. The fast AGI log, uh, it logs calls and updates data as they pass through the dial plan. All outgoing calls must pass through this AGI script. So if you're placing a call from a VC dial system, whether it's for VC dial or something else, it still needs to go uh, through this script unless you're calling to like an agent extension. Um, every single hangup needed to be processed by this, whether it had anything to do with VC dial or not. As such, this uh, Perl script or this AGI script, there's a call to it in every single context, macro, anything that you build into asterisk or add on to it for VC dial. It also logs to and updates a whole bunch of tables. I'm not going to go through the list, but it's right there. Um, call tracking. VGDial uses the caller ID name variable to keep track of phone calls. Basically, in order to uh, make sure a channel is the channel that we think it is, we, we follow the caller ID name. Um, all, of the score, uh, all of the core scripts look for this variable. 
basically, for like outbound calls, you'll see V followed by a 19-digit uh, number. For inbound calls, it's a Y. For manual dial calls, it's an M. All kinds of stuff. Um, the reason we chose the caller ID name is it was at the early onset of Fiji dial or um, asterisk. It was the only way to reliably pass a variable from a local channel to the underlying channel. Uh, just adding on a variable to the channel, that variable added to the local channel didn't always make it to the underlying channel. Um, let's see, up until recently, caller ID name, uh, carriers, when you pass them a caller ID name, they just ignored it. They, they would use a lookup in a national database, find the, the name associated with the number and display that. Um, there were a few exceptions. I believe Canada is the one of the only countries in the world that up until recently sent the name as received. Uh, hmm? Not all the time. Yeah. Uh, however, recently with the advent of SS, I mean, SIP to SS7, I believe it is, uh, a lot of cellular carriers are now starting to actually display the caller ID name. Uh, this causes problems when you're dialing people in you I mean, like somebody picks up the phone and looks at it and says oh who the heck is v 10891929 blah 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 so that's starting to become an issue that we're looking into um in asterisk 11 sip rpid changes started changing the caller id name of the channels resulting in lost calls so your carrier does an rpid name update and at which point Vici dial completely loses the phone call. Uh, we actually, on our, on our hosted platform, had to put in uh, tools in our gateway that block those RPID changes from getting into our code. Um, connected line name still has the original caller ID name, luckily, but in not, I mean, but in asterisk 11, it was not available in all AMI events. Some of the changes that were made to the AMI that have affected Vici dial, core show channels AMI action should be used instead of sh core, or show channels concise CLI output. Vici dial used to just connect in uh, through the AST update and issue that CLI command. Uh, numerous AMI events had their names changed and the structure of those uh, AMI events was changed as well. All AMI events that VichiDial cares about anyways include the uh, connected line name. I believe actually they all co contain it, but I'm not positive on that. Um, the CPD software was uh, made end of life by Syngoma, and SIP cause codes are now able to be accessed from the dial plans, so there was no need for those two events. Uh, asked update needed to be switched to the core show channels action, and asked manager send needed to parse these new AMI events uh, differently. Uh, and like I said, the CPD and uh, SIP events were no longer needed to be parsed. Both asked update and uh, asked manager send needed to check the connected line name and connect, I mean, caller ID name for the Vici dial ID. Uh, and basically, because of all of the things that needed to be changed, it required a complete rewrite of these two scripts. It wasn't like I could simply patch this stuff in. Um, other changes in Asterisk 13, uh, VGDial uses I mean, heavily local channels for initiating calls. It allowed VGDial to be very flexible. You can use a SIP carrier, you can use T1s, you can use just about anything that Asterisk supports for an outbound call, VGDial will uh, be able to, I mean, to place those calls. Um, in early versions of Asterisk, if you tried to uh, redirect a local channel while it was in the process of optimizing, there was a very good chance of it crashing. This is an issue when you're placing 100,000 calls a day. That's 100,000 chances for it to crash. So Vichidile's routing AGI scripts refuse to redirect local channels. And they'll just detect the local channel and exit. Uh, to get around this, we uh, basically started by playing a li little 40 millisecond sound file called SIP Silence, which is literally just silence, to these channels. And that little tiny bit of audio would cause uh, the local channel to optimize because uh, optimization happened during audio processing. 
Other things that we did is the AGI scripts were run multiple times. If you look at uh, the dial plan, you would see like the outbound routing AGI run three times in a row. And that's because the first time it would still be a local channel, but by the second time it runs, it might have optimized out. In asterisk 13, there were major changes to local channels. Um, they no longer optimize unless there is a complete audio path, meaning both sides are connecting together and uh, talking. Conferences don't count as a complete audio path, at least in asterisk 13. I don't know if they fixed that in later versions. Uh, this meant that there would always be a local channel when VChDial would want to redirect the call. Also, local channels would never have a complete audio path because the conference is not counting and thus would uh, never optimize, and this would add to the system load. Uh, changing VGDial to route local channels would have been a massive undertaking and not address the actual system load issue. Um, the solution for this was to actually create an AGI script that would uh, look up the local channel variable in a table, figure out the underlying SIP, I mean, underlying channel, SIP, whatever, and redirect that channel to the actual routing scripts, at which point the local channel just turns around and hangs up. Uh, the only issue with, with this was the local channel uh, Mapping did not exist. We had to find a way of uh, creating that. To build the channel map, we actually had to try two different solutions. The first one proved to have some issues. Uh, originally, we had the Ask Manager Listen script listening for the dial begin event because that actually included the local channel and the SIP channel. Um, under load, however, that proved not to be very reliable. Sometimes the underlying channel would be blank in the AMI event just not even have a header. It was just gone. Um, the second solution that we came up with was basically to have uh, the asked update script build the channel map. And it basically uh, looks for the, or it logs the channel and the caller ID name that's associated with that channel. And when it finds a duplicate caller ID name, it, you have the local channel, you have the underlying channel, and then that gets used by the routing script. Luckily, uh, this happens, I mean, unless your carrier answers the call in less than 0 0.4 seconds, this will catch it. So, um, other fun things that I had to deal with. Uh, most of the core was written 14 years ago. At the time, Matt Florell originally wrote AST GUI client pretty much for himself. Um, much of the AST GUI client and VChDial code was developed organically, meaning there was no design docs, there was no defined uh, interfaces for things. Matt just basically added things as he needed to to get it to work. Um, also, he did not expect very many people to be using it. Um, that has changed. There are now thousands of installs all over the world. He also did not expect that other people like me would have to help maintain it. As such, the core of the code was not well documented. Um, I think he had something like five comments in the entire asked update script. Um, he also had a feeling that functions were stupid. He has since gotten much better about that, but the original AST update script is one giant function. I think there's one little logging function at the bottom. So um, yeah, that was fun. Uh, he also had some very strange programming habits uh, early on. Things like he would declare an array called the letter M, the letter T, and set it equal to an empty array. And then whenever he needed to reinitialize an array, he'd set it equal to MT. It was bizarre, and I had never seen that before, and it took me days to figure that one out. Um, also, because the core hasn't been touched much in 14 years, Matt actually didn't remember how vast par parts of it worked. Um, they were, his recollection was spotty at best. In order to actually uh, rebuild those uh, scripts, the asked update and the manager listen script, I had to basically dissect them and uh, figure out how they were working, write a bunch of pseudocode, and then rebuild them from the pseudocode. That was an interesting time. Um, 
And it's fun when the person that you're trying to get this information from is your boss. <laughs> Um, some various lessons that we've learned in this process, uh, up until and including Asterisk 13, we only added support for long-term releases. However, it seems that most of the major changes to Asterisk happen during short-term releases. As such, we need to start supporting short-term releases, uh, but not recommending them for production use. Uh, for instance, as, I mean, uh, probably the next short-term release we will support is going to be asterisk 16, um, but we will probably still recommend asterisk 15 once I get asterisk 15 working. Um, this is because the long-term releases have a lot more of the bugs worked out and tend to be a lot more stable in our uh, experience. Um, we also need to follow the asterisk development a lot closer. Um, we've been following the mailing lists, uh, hanging out on uh, free nodes, chat, and stuff like that, looking for changes as they come up. And we need to provide feedback to the DigiM team as they uh, make these changes to make sure that uh, anything that affects us is um, well thought out, is the way I would put it. There's also a number of enhancements to Asterisk that would actually improve VichiDial. Uh, for instance, rather than having to make a local channel optimize AGI script, there really should be just an application that you say optimize this channel. Um, but we can't really implement those until Asterisk is running against, or VichiDial is running against Asterisk trunk because it, I mean, we can't ask them to develop some feature that we won't be using for years ahead of time or ask them to backport it because that just doesn't make any sense. So, any questions? I think that 15 is also a short term because they are having a lot of changes. I'm sorry? I came to know that 15 is now not LPS. It has been decided to uh, a short term only. I went through their chart. And oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can speak on that. Um, due to the major changes that occurred as a result of implementing video support, um, we weren't comfortable with making it an LTS because we're going to continue to add additional features. Clearly, I'm not keeping up enough with Happy Astros development. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I think we sent it to the dev list. We also announced it in a few other places, too. Yeah, I've been kind of busy the yeah. last few weeks because of this. Yep, so 16 should be an LTS. Okay. I guarantee nothing because this is the world, but it will most likely yeah. be an LTS. Okay. You had a question? Here, I'll give you a mic. Mics are good. Um, have you considered writing a lot of this in as a C module for Asterisk? Because I mean, I've done that, and it makes a lot of the stuff a lot easier because you can lock things to prevent stuff from changing out from under you. and. Um, it's harder, but it's, it, also well, it's easier. a lot harder. The, the other problem is that VichiDial, uh, any given outbound phone call can generate upwards of five sub channels for it. So when you're placing 200 calls from a single server at concurrently, that's you know thousands and thousands of channels. So dealing with concurrency issues in that, I'd rather leave that up to the experts at <laughs> Digium to to work that out. Um, and the, I mean, the interfaces that we've had so far, the AMI and the AGI interfaces that we, we use, have become very rock hard stable. And I'm not too worried about them uh, changing in that manner, so. And to asterisk yes in, in terms of both of commands and also as uh, monitoring channels and all why when send information to asterisk you go that route instead of AMI well, and directly doing it Vichidel is a multi-server application there you can have clusters of I mean, we have clients with 40 dialers on a single cluster all running Vichidel or and asterisk and by doing it via the database that is a single point for uh, basically inter-process communication. Uh, you don't have to worry about connecting into each one of those. And by doing it that way, there's the, the queuing aspect of it. You can load a whole bunch of queries into the uh, VHDL manager table, and each server handles its own connection into its own 
uh, AMI, and it's through the local host connection, which is much more stable than some of our clients' networks. <laughs> Have you considered you, uh, migrating to ARI instead of AMI? Um, I've looked into it. it a, ARI is more of a, uh, it, it just wouldn't be a very good fit for what we're doing specifically. Because we uh, as a company are considering that change right now. And our main goal is um, we use AMI to send commands and receive events. But sometimes during the middle of the dial plane logic, we need to consult our external application to get some information back. We use AGI for that. And ARI centralizes these two things. Mm -hmm. So is that not a problem you have, obtaining information in the middle of the dial plan? Not really. Uh, most of the time when we need to gain information, it's either at the beginning of a uh, dial plan event or at the end of it. Uh, though at the same time, there is, you know, existing phone calls that are up for you know 30 minutes when an agent decides to redirect the call and stuff like that. But we've built so much of the system around what we have that changing it to a different programming interface would be uh, difficult at the, at the very least. Um, and basically, you're talking about something that would require a complete re-implementation of our software. I know. Dealing with that right now. Yeah. Um, but so as a dialer, you cannot do things like um, skill-based routing because yep. you, you don't do that. We already do that. But then you don't need to obtain information in the middle of the dial plan? For well, you start the call. 30 seconds later, the person answer. And you decide how you're going to route that call to an agent. Right. Now, the agents that were available when you started the call are different than the agents when the person answered the call. Right. So you need information at that moment. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, because we're using local channels, the outbound call is one section of dial plan, and then when it uh, connects, it gets routed into another section of dial plan, and at which point it's the very beginning of that dial plan step in that second section. Thank so, you. any other questions? Uh, actually, uh, I went to the court uh, once, and I came to know that uh, you established one call and tear down. It, it is more than 10 uh, database connections and more than that oh, sometimes. Yeah. It's yeah. very heavily database connection driven. So when we are uh, writing some code, we are checking how we can avoid the database connection. But we are really uh, surprised when we are seeing the VC dial code, how you are optimizing uh, these connections and how uh, you are maintaining such a good performance uh, with these connections? Well, one of the things that we do is we make sure that the, any queries that we run against the database minimize locking. As such, we do not use joins. We do not, I mean, we try to avoid subselects. We do not use unions, that sort of thing. So any query needs to, that connects to the database basically needs to finish in less than a second. If it doesn't, uh, you can have major problems for all the various agents. So, for instance, reports, a lot of the process, I mean, uh, a lot of the reports are written by just having them quickly grab the code, I mean, the data that they need, and then processing it in the script itself, whereas you can uh, um, write an SQL query that connects in and has MySQL generate those, I mean, the results. And the thing is, is by having MySQL generate the results, it tends to take three to four times longer than for the, uh, the actual code to do it, and the clocks on the database are considerably longer. So VichaDial is extremely careful about how it interoperates with its database. Uh, Matt generally refers to it as more of a real-time interaction with the database, kind of what you'd see when you're talking about like uh, massive multiplayer online video games. Uh, that sort of thing. It's not like how you would generate a CRM system that you, you connect in and it doesn't really matter if it takes 30 seconds for a result to come up. Uh, so it's very different there. Um, yeah. So you're running multiple queries instead of one big query? Yeah, exactly. You, you run one query, grab a bunch of data back from it, process through it, figure out what new queries you need to run, grab those, and at which point you go from having you know 30 second lock down to four half second locks. So it makes programming the scripts more difficult, but it makes the locking in the database much faster. 
Any other questions? Um, excuse me. Uh, for for instance, uh, you, the load on a asterisk or on the web server for VichiDial, we found that uh, by using a PHP caching engine like eAccelerator, this is, I mean they're pretty much built into PHP now, but they used to not be. It dramatically increased the number of agents that you could have on a single web server, but. The major performance uh, bottleneck on a web server these days is actually the TCP IP uh, stack is limited to 65,000 ports. And so when you have uh, tons of agents on the system, it's opening up a port, I mean, a connection into the database multiple times for each agent. And at which point you t go through the local ports and you end up hitting what's called uh, local port exhaustion. In order to get around this, you need to, I, I actually, I believe the default number of local ports that are available on a Linux system is like 25,000 ports. The theoretical limit is 65,000. So you have to go into the operating system and tweak some settings for the number of local ports. And all that basically comes down to is the, uh, when you connect to a database and then disconnect, you have to keep the, the port that was in use for that open for a certain period of time so that any stray packets on the network don't come in during another connection and cause issues. So that's one of the, the many optimizations that we've had to take, I mean, come across. Um, as I said, the VichiDial is optimized for having multi-server clusters. We have clients with hundreds of agents connected through few dozen servers, and those are uh, basically operating in a manner that allows the whole system to work as one unit, and that's all done through the, the database uh, connections and stuff like that. Okay. Yes. So actually, uh, I saw that error, but I was not aware that uh, this is due to AMI. So can you please uh, explain uh, uh, this event? Well, basically, uh, when you connect to the AMI and issue a command, and then you want to exit, you issue the logout action. And at times, asterisk just does not respond to that logout. You don't get the so long and thanks for all the fish, I think it is, that it responds with. And at which point um, we have a, the system set to look for that response. And after 15 seconds of waiting for it, it just closes the connection. And when you do that, though, Asterisk views that as, or at least it used to, as an issue and with your code and throws that warning saying broken pipe. Because the communication, I mean, one side it closed the pipe communication with the AMI interface. It, it basically, it's, asterisk is complaining, I mean, that error is asterisk complaining that you closed the connection without telling it you were closing it, but you did tell it you were closing it. So basically the AMI is uh, just not quite uh, recognizing that you've closed that connection. Well, like I said, there's that closing connection problem. Under high load, you can also have uh, core show channels. And now the new, uh, what is that called? Where did I put that in the slide? Changes the AMI. Oh, uh, core show channels, the AM, that AMI event um, th that we've switched to in Asterisk 13, it actually, uh, sometimes you'll issue it, it will say the channel list is coming, and then nothing comes. We actually had to program around that the other day, um, whereby if it doesn't send anything, we treat that as a bad grab and rerun the code again. And that's in Asterisk 13. 
Uh, so at times the AMI still doesn't fully respond properly to various events. So that's one of the, the issues with it. Um, it. It basically comes down to programming around the idiosyncrasies of the various uh, things that it can do under load. Any other questions? I'm sorry? We added an HDMI, or eight, not HDMI, a uh, AMI event that basically threw the SIP response that you got from the carrier as an AMI event. However, that is no longer needed in asterisk 13 because that information is easily accessible through the dial plan. It used to not be the, that way. In asterisk 1.8, the only way to find out what the carrier said was to uh, intercept that information from the underlying asterisk channel. Yeah, so if you got a 503 service unavailable, the only, I mean, what you would end up with in the dial plan is chan unavailable. And that doesn't really tell you what happened and that can mean multiple different things or a congestion. So by going to and getting the underlying SIP information, you're able to make better decisions about what's going on with your carrier, you know, if uh, you're suddenly getting five, I mean, fifty percent of your calls are service unavailable. You might want to give them a call and find out why it is that they're failing to route your calls. So, which variable uh, in Asterisk thirteen having that information? Um, there is a uh, hangup cause function that, if you pass it the correct variables, it will re respond back with that. So, that, that, that uh, actually, I use that uh, hangup cause, but that was giving uh, like uh, a very limited. Yeah, hang up cause used to be just a variable. Now it's an actual function, and you can get back from it uh, not only the 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 under or not only the asterisk response, but the underlying tech response. So I think one of the variables you pass it is tech, and it will respond back with the actual uh, carrier response for that hang up. Your answer is to the point, and I definitely see the target. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I'm quite new to everything that you are talking. Is the is the which you done just the using the AMI API or It uses AMI and AGI. The AMI is for basically issuing commands. The AGI provides feedback, so and also handles things like call routing and stuff like that. Yes. Um, the, I mean, the, all of the PHP front end code, when it wants to execute something, it, it creates, it, I mean, it sticks into the VichiDial database, a manager action, and that gets executed by the Perl code, which turns around and hands it off to the, I mean, to Asterisk to actually do it. Yes. Sorry, You're fine, no one bother. Um, dial plan steps tend to actually generate more load from what I saw than uh, running compiled code that is specifically designed to actually do what it is you're looking for. So if you're, you know, you got a hundred calls in queue waiting for five agents, to, one of them to become available, you don't want massive amounts of dial plan steps running through, whereas you can have the underlying uh, Perl code, which once you start executing a Perl program, it actually gets compiled and it's just as optimized as C to run through and actually keep track of that information and then make the, the necessary calls. Anyone else? Cool. Uh, if there's any additional questions, you can probably find Michael 
out in the hall uh, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, as always, if you have feedback, like I said at the beginning, use the uh, scheduling website or the application. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I believe it is now lunch. So if you are hungry, you can head downstairs and grab some hopefully tasty food. Yeah. And have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you all.